I'm going to start off by looking at the what we call an E minor bichord shape because it's the easiest one to get us going to start with because it uses the least amount of fingers. Now the first thing we need to do is consider the E minor chord that we should be familiar with. If you're not then you need to know the E minor chord. You should already know it, it's one of the first chords you've probably learned because it's one of the easiest. It only includes two fingers. Most chord charts that you'll get, chord diagrams, certainly the one that I use with my students, it shows you to use your um, your middle two fingers, so your, your middle finger and your ring finger, and you play those, the second fret on your A string, second fret on your D string, all the other strings are open, and that's your basic E minor root chord. So you should be familiar with that. If you're not familiar with that, learn that before moving on and then come back to the video. So your E minor. Now, we're going to change that slightly for the purpose of playing the bar chords. Now, for the bar chords, what we want to do is change the fingering that we use for the E minor chord. It sounds like we're getting a bit complicated already. We've already learnt this fingering, why would we want to change it? But there's method to my madness, so bear with me and hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand why it's useful to be able to do it both ways. So rather than using your uh, index finger and your, your ring finger, sorry your, your middle finger and your ring finger, what we're going to do is play those same two notes but we're going to use the ring finger and little finger. Same fret, second fret on your A, second fret on your D. Play those two notes that way. Doesn't matter which fingers I'm playing, it sounds the same. The guitar doesn't know which fingers I'm using, so the chord sounds identical. But the reason I'm going to use the different fingers is to make it easier to play this bar chord and the next one that I'm going to show you. So be comfortable playing an E minor chord basically using your ring finger and your little finger to fret the notes before we move on. So if you can do that, now we're going to combine the first exercise I showed you, which was sticking your first finger across all the strings to make a bar, and then we're going to use that new fingering for the E minor shape to create our first <coughs> bar chord. So if we start with the, 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 the E minor that we've just done, you'll notice that I'm fretting two notes on the second frets, the rest of my strings are open. And that's an E minor. If I wanted to play an F minor, all I need to do is move everything up one fret. But that doesn't mean just my fingers up one fret that I'm, that I'm playing the notes on. It also means I need to move my nut up one fret. Now going back to the capo, imagine if I was to put the capo on the first fret and then move those fingers up a fret there I've got a, an F minor chord using my capo and that same chord shape that I've just moved up so everything's moved up my nuts moved up pretend using the capo and my fretted notes have moved up everything by one fret so that's how we go from an E to an F simple reason for that is most chords certainly all these ones that we're learning here they're named after the lowest note of the chord. So with my E minor, my lowest note is an E, open E string. If I move it all up a fret, my lowest note will be an F, so that's going to become an F minor. Rather than using the capo, I'm going to use my bar finger to pretend to be a capo, and then I'm going to play those same notes but instead of the second fret we play them on the third fret so it's going to be an F minor so I can move from a E minor to an F minor and that's my my first bar chord an F minor bar chord now it sounds like a lot of a faff because it's much easier just to play your E minor the standard way so I hear you all ask What's the benefit? Why would I want to bother with this? There's a few benefits in terms of sound and creativity wise, but the main benefit is 
it expands your quad vocabulary. Once you've learnt that shape, it's something we call a movable shape, and you can use that all over the neck. So, that F minor that I've just played, if I move the whole thing up, another fret again. So I'm starting at my, my second fret, which is an F sharp. It becomes an F sharp minor chord. Move it up another fret, that's a G minor. A G sharp minor, an A minor, and so on and so forth. Using that same shape, but just using it up and down the neck. As long as we're strong enough to hold our fingers in those positions, we can play every single minor chord in every key of the guitar. There's 12 keys, so that gives us 12 minor chords using just one shape. So that's the reason why bar chords are quite useful because whilst some of the root chords, your open chords, are, are simpler, some of them will not be as simple as the, the first ones you learn. So by learning the bar chord, you've got yourself covered for all of those minor chords. Um, say for example, a, a B minor, if you just play it in a standard root position, a lot of my students struggle with that. I'm, I'm not quite sure why it's not the most complicated chord but I am using all four fingers to play it whereas a B minor bar I can go to my B use my same shape and play it fairly simply certainly in my opinion but again if you're not used to playing these bar chords it might feel a little bit challenging to your hand until you get uh, get the strength and, and get used to it just like any other technique so that's why they're called E minor uh, bar chords because we're using the E minor shape but remember we're not using the normal fingering we're using a different fingering so we're using our ring and small finger to make the E minor shape and then we're using our, our first finger our index finger to make the bar so we can play it everywhere up and down the neck so have a go at that um, see how you get along with that. The next video I'm going to do is going to be E major, so that's going to be slightly different than this one, but it's the natural next progression. Once we've got those, we've got quite a lot of the bar chord work done, certainly for the basics, and then I'll maybe move on to some A based shapes after that. But we'll start off with the, uh, this E minor, in the next video I'll look at um, E major. Enjoy! <laughs>